Vivian Campbell. I'm here at the Gibson showroom in Beverly Hills, California with my signature custom shop, Les Paul. I just always loved the sound of the electric guitar, much to the chagrin of my mother who hated it. Anything that came on the radio that had a guitar solo and I would be turning it up and turning it up in the car and my mother would be turning it down. I just gravitated to the sound. Um, Mark Boland and T-Rex, that was the first thing that really was a, a moment, an epiphany for me, seeing Mark Boland on a show called Top of the Pops in the early 1970s. It was probably 72, 71, something like that. It was a life-changing moment for me. I just was seduced by the sound of, of rock and roll. By the time uh, I was really getting serious about playing, I'd gravitated to the guitar players in Thin Lizzy. And like I said, uh, Brian Robertson and Scott Gorham both played Les Pauls. and. My ultimate guitar hero, Gary Moore, played uh, a Les Paul, which I later found out was actually Peter Green's original Les Paul from Fleetwood Mac. I ordered a gold Les Paul standard, and I waited for many, many, many months. Uh, I was 15 at the time. It's a very important guitar to me, because that's the guitar I learned how to play on. That's when I was starting to get really serious about my craft. When I first came to Los Angeles uh, to work with Ronnie Dio in 1982, that was the only guitar I had. I did the, the first Dio album, Holy Diver, with that guitar. I did the first tour with that guitar. That same one. That same one, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, Les Pauls are seriously substantial instruments. That's part of their, their nature, and it's also part of the tone. <laughs> This guitar actually was based upon a hybrid bastardized guitar that I've been playing for many, many years. It started life as a, I think it was a 78 Les Paul Custom that I bought in a pawn shop in Nashville. It just became a comfortable guitar and it was a guitar I was using most with Def Leppard for these past couple of decades. And uh, when Gibson first approached me about doing a model, that's essentially what we base it off of. But there are certain bespoke differences in this guitar than there are in other Les Pauls that I have. Job number one was for Philip to try and profile a neck that was very, very similar to that. I, I do know that I like jumbo frets, like the biggest frets I could find. They were Dunlop 6100s, I believe, uh, because I bend a lot and I put vibrato on chords and, and little skinny frets just don't cut it for me. I just can't, I can't get any purchase on them. I can't get underneath them. The color was a big thing. That color is called Antrim Basalt. I was born and reared in County Antrim in Northern Ireland. Basalt um, is volcanic rock. In Northern Ireland, in County Antrim, there's the Giant's Causeway, which is a very unique eight-sided volcanic rock formation. It's very, very famous, and uh, I guess that's where the name came from. But to me, it's it's elegant enough and understated enough, you know. I didn't want it to be too glitzy. Also, the, the hardware is, is all brushed aluminum. The, the pickup in the back is a, a DiMarzio SH3. Uh, it is unique in that it has the brushed aluminum finish. Uh, the pickup in the front is a super distortion. To my ears, I find this guitar to be very balanced. <laughs> As far as the, the playability of the guitar, I, I've had so, so many years experience playing Les Pauls of all shapes and sizes, and uh, I've distilled all of my favorite elements into this instrument. At the end of the day, it's just another Les Paul, but it's my Les Paul, and uh, it couldn't be any better. It couldn't reflect me and what it is I want in a guitar anymore. You know, it's, it's uh, all of that knowledge and all of that experience we crammed into this. Yay! <laughs>